So there's lots of action in the field of mobility. Do you know what that is? It's got nothing to do with your bowel movements. It's about transportation, mobility. You know, people getting backwards and forwards using taxis and that kind of thing. Uber. Yes, Uber is about to list on the New York markets. That's going to be exciting. We're all waiting for that one. Anyway, lots of the car manufacturers are experimenting with their own mobility solutions because, of course, if private car ownership is going west, well, then they better start selling these cars to the companies that provide the mobility solutions. Yeah. So uh, BMW and Mercedes, two of the world's finest luxury brand car manufacturers, mm -hmm. launched a trial project called Car2Go. And the way it works, of course, is that in a city, you have an app and you can check and there are these BMWs and Benzes all over town and you just like pick one up, uh, drive it for a couple of hours or a couple of days. Unfortunately, they didn't quite think the whole thing through. There were problems with the app that allowed anonymous logins and the next thing, whew, <laughs> 150 of these luxury vehicles stolen. What could go wrong? So which third world hellhole did they launch this app in anyway where they have such a crime and theft related problem? Was it uh, Jakarta or Johannesburg or Jammu? No, my friends, it was in Chicago. <laughs> in Chicago. All of the cars. Showtown. <laughs> it's come to my attention there may have been some fooling around in that last clip. <laughs> now listen, there's another problem that's been aggravating me over the last couple of weeks, and this is insanely rich capitalists complaining about the system of capitalism. The most recent offender is a guy called Ray Dalio, which for you who don't know, is an insanely rich guy who runs a hedge fund called Bridgewater, one of the largest and most successful in the world, which makes mega, mega fees from investing for pension funds and those kinds of people. So this is a man who has more money than you can shake a stick at, coming on national television and talking how about uh, income inequality is a problem uh, and how the system needs to be reformed because some people are getting too rich. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. It's like a polygamist deciding that he's, uh, you know, coming out in favor of feminism. Just shut up. You know, just let the rest of us get on with it. Samsung. Samsung, yes. They've been on the blunders before. Remember in May 2017 when the Note 7s, a newly launched, very expensive phone of theirs, was exploding. <laughs> catching fire the batteries were self-combusting and this was happening on side of airplanes and so on so as people got on the plane the air hostesses were saying anyone who's got a samsung note 7 one side please hand it over now we want to put it in this fireproof bag anyway it seems notwithstanding the fact that they're a massively successful phone manufacturer with their bazillions of android uh, phones already sold is having a similar nightmare with its uh, galaxy fold product now, really, this looks to me like one of those solutions uh, in search of a problem. But for some reason or another, they decided to bring out this thing which folds like a small phone, but opens out if you want to turn it into like an iPad-y type of thing. And they've been talking about this for ages, and it is not cheap. It retails at somewhere around 45,000 Rand. Well, the fact is, it hasn't started retailing because no sooner did they send these damn things to the reviewers, you know, the journalists, when they started picking up all sorts of problems. Mm -hmm. For one thing, when you fold it out, there's a big gap at the top and the bottom. For another, over the fold, there's a visible crease. And uh, when you're running apps across the fold, apparently you get all sorts of distortion and mismatch. <laughs> so the device has basically been withdrawn before it was even launched. Ah. So yet another big brand product fail for Samsung. Come on, guys. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm old school or something, but I still read financial statements of companies and think, well, you know, these have got to be legit. They've been checked by an auditor, even though there's that thing at the front of page one, which says, guys, we don't, uh, you know, confirm. There may have been some, you know, fiddling with the numbers by the management team. Well, China, we go to China for our next blunder. This is a company called Kang Mai Pharmaceuticals. You may not have heard of them, but they're not exactly small. I mean, they're part of the MSCI China Index. They have a market capitalization of something like 50 billion yuan, wow. which is like uh, 10 billion uh, US dollars. They announced that in their 2018 annually financially audited statements from last year, they had declared that they had cash resources of something in the region of 32 billion yuan. 
But they've now fessed up. They're a little short. <laughs> they lost somewhere in the region of, or they overestimated their cash resources by about, uh, you know, 4.4 billion US dollars. 64 billion rands, that is. So they, I don't know, somehow they said it was a mistake, there was a problem, they got it wrong. So naturally, the shares of Kang My Pharmaceuticals, when they opened on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange, limit down, plunged, going down and going down fast. Chinese accounting! Yeah, exactly. <laughs>